Hello and welcome to our first First Chapter Friday. This program is an opportunity for me to read to you the first chapter or at least the first little bit, some of the chapters are short so I'll read a couple, of some new books or some classics or just some books that I think that you'll love. All of these books are available for you to check out from the Essex Library so if you're interested in any of these titles you can put them on hold on the computer or give us a call to get them during park and pickup or you can make an appointment to come in and browse these and other awesome titles that we have in our collection. Today I'm going to be reading to you the beginning of Milo Moss is Officially Unamazing by Lauren Albright published by Little Brown Books. And I'm actually going to read more than the first chapter because the chapters in this book are only a couple pages long. Um, I grabbed this one because I wanted to know what was going on with the giant tower of toilet paper on the cover. <laughs> so sit back and enjoy. Chapter 1 My favorite story from the Guinness World Records is about a tiny piece of land in the middle of the ocean. Somewhere close to Great Britain exists Bishop's Rock. It's only the size of about three tennis courts, and it is known as the smallest island with a building on it. The story goes like this. A long time ago, ships would be drifting through the waves, open oceans as far as the crow's nest could see. The crews of the ships would be thinking they were in for smooth sailing when they were swabbing decks, walking planks, carving new wooden legs and whatnot. Then, without warning, BAM! They'd ram into this tiny, non-threatening, no big deal island and their boat would splinter into toothpicks. It kept happening again and again until some higher-ups like the queen or king was like, We have far too many toothpicks and not enough boats because of that silly island. We must fix this. Go forth and build a lighthouse. So they hired some dude to build that lighthouse. For three years, this guy and his crew worked to construct it out in the middle of the endless sea. Sunscreen wasn't even invented yet. Or porta potties Over 1,000 days later... The work was done. A 120 foot tall lighthouse stood on this itty bitty island in the middle of the great big ocean. But before they could even have a grand opening celebration, something went wrong. A big wave came up and whoosh, washed the lighthouse away. Just like that, splash, gone. All before they even lit it up. So the guy gets to work again and designs something better. This time, it takes him and his crew years and years to build. He makes sure that this one is waveproof. Nearly 3,000 days later, the lighthouse is finished. This one is worth noting. This one is called King of Lighthouses and gets the island in Guinness. I love this story so much because I get it. All the stuff that happened before is okay because eventually it wins. The lighthouse outlasts the wave. The island gets a record. That's what gives me hope. Someday, my parents and I will get a record too. And that day is today. Which is why we are currently in the car dressed as human-sized cockroaches. You can see why I couldn't just leave you there, right? <laughs> Chapter 2. Since it's September, the newest edition... Chapter 2. Since it's September, the newest edition of Guinness has just been released. Thank goodness I have that to read, because the view outside the car window is scraggly trees, brown grass, and endless cacti. I'm halfway through the animal section. The mantis shrimp wins the award for strongest self-powered strike by an animal with a kick equal to 340 pounds of force. One dad says, Hey, Milo, how about you read some of those records out loud? Or mom could do it, I suggest. Nope, mom says from the front seat. Mom was up late pa painting roach wings, and she's currently sleeping. It's your turn to entertain our driver. Safety laws frown upon reading and driving at the same time. Dad says, come on, at least just read page 96. Translation, Dad doesn't really want me to read from the book. He just wants me to talk about the real Iron Man. 
Richard Browning, the guy who invented the flight suit and got into Guinness. Whoa, Dad, did you know the largest yo-yo was almost 12 feet tall? Dad ignores my comment. How fast did Browning fly again? And that yo-yo weighed 4,620 pounds. What was his flight speed again? Can you remember, Milo? I flipped some more pages. Can you believe the tallest toothpick sculpture is almost 17 feet? Milo, Mom says, just tell your father what he wants to know. You're interrupting my beauty sleep. Dad pats her knee. You don't need that, honey. You're already stunning. I bet Richard Browning would think so, too. Milo, Mom says, there's no escape. I resign to my fate. The real Iron Man Robert Browning flew 85 miles per hour in a body-controlled jet engine suit. Really? Dad says like he's shocked. He's not. Dad knows everything about Browning. And how did he power that suit? With six kerosene-fueled microgas turbines, I quote from memory. And I bet I could do it even faster than that. Dad knows it could. Don't you think? If only it had a parachute. Richard Browning is actually really cool. He worked on the flight suit for years, but he only recently got into Guinness. And now he's Dad's hero. Maybe it's because they're both engineers and marathon runners. Or maybe it's because Browning has done what Dad has always dreamed of. Richard Browning has earned a world record. Because I'm an excellent son, as I flip through the pages of my new Guinness, I also listen to Dad talk about Browning and how there will be a day when flight suits will be as common as cars. I supply the appropriate uh-huhs whenever he pauses. When Dad starts talking about all the flight suit prototypes, my nose starts to twitch. A tickle builds inside my left nostril. I force it into the loudest, most intense sneeze of my life. Seriously, that could have been a record. In the front seat, Mom bolts upright. Success. Whew, I scratch my nose. Sorry, didn't mean to disturb you, Mom. It's just something really irritated me. Mom slowly turns to glare. Something is very irritating to me, too. Now that you're awake, you should hear what Dad was just saying about how we'll all have our own flight suit someday. Go on, Dad, tell her. Mom crosses her arms. Milo's fortunate that we don't have a flight suit right now, or he'd be getting sh he'd be getting to shop. Mom crosses her arms. Milo's fortunate that we don't have a flight suit right now, or that's how he'd be getting to Shotwell Stadium. Dad sighs. If only we were so lucky. So, if you want to find out what exactly is at Shotwell Stadium, what kind of world record Milo Moss is going to try to break, and if they'll be successful. Come and grab this brand new book. Milo Boss is officially unamazing. As you can already tell, it's uh it's it's gonna be a funny one. Alright, we'll see you again next week for First Chapter Friday.